Hello friends, welcome to Home Tutor. This is your personal teacher Neva Nivin. Chapter 1 of the 10th Standard History deals with the rise of nationalism in Europe. This is a vast topic dealing with uh, revolutionary activities, nationalism and liberalism of or liberation of Europe. The topics are easy to learn because all these uh, topics comes to be a history and we can study everything in a form of story. In the first topic in this video, we will study about Frederick Soro. The Rise of Nationalism in Europe In 1848, Frederick Soro, a French artist, prepared a series of four prints visualizing his dream of a world made up of democratic and social republics as he called them. Sir so Frederick Soro is a French artist influenced by the French Revolution. He drew a series of four prints in 1848 in order to visualize his dream of a world with a common concept, democratic and social republic. So democratic means a government run by elected members of that country and social republic means a republic country headed by the elected representatives of the government in which the social principles are followed. The first print, figure one of the series, shows the people of Europe and America, men and women of all ages and social classes, marching in a long train and offering homage to the Statue of Liberty as they pass by it. So homage means a respect or honor given to a particular thing. So where they are giving a homage, they are giving homage to the Statue of Liberty as they pass by it because the people are being arranged in the form of a train, in a long train and they are offering homages. All the people from Europe and America, men and women of all ages and classes are being in a queue or being in a long train and they are marching towards the Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty is considered as a universal symbol of freedom. It is an allegory. Allegory means a metal piece uh, or a thing that is prepared for representing some ideas or thoughts. We call artists of the time of the French Revolution personified liberty as a female figure. Here you can recognize the torch of enlightenment she bears in one hand and the charter of the right of man in the other hand. So enlightenment means a beginning of a new era or a beginning of a new life that is promoted by positive and uh, very good energy that lead uh, to the well-being of people. We say that Buddha has been enlightened under the Bhaudi tree and the charter of a right of man means a human civil right document that she wear in the other hand. On the earth in the foreground of the image lie the shattered remains of the symbols of absolutist mona institutions. We can uh, see the meaning here in new words box. Absolutist means literally a government or system of rule that has no restraint. Restraint means no limit on the power exercised. In history, the term refers to a form of monarchical government that was centralized, militarized and represent, repressive. So most of the time, absolutist means a king or a monarch who will be ruling his subject only with cruelty and the people will never experience any type of progressive, peaceful life in that role of king. Under a monarchical form of government, the all the administration and for other processes will be centralized and it will come under a single person the military will be only under the command of the particular king and the form of rule will be very repressive that is harsh treatments in soros utopian vision the peoples of the world are grouped as distinct nations identified through their flags and national costumes so according to him there is no caste creed racism uh, sex or 
uh, higher class lower class anything only only one concept the people comes under that is nation the people will be identified only through their flags and with the help of national costumes leading the procession they passed the statue of liberty are the united states and switzerland by this time they are already nation states so during his picturization americans and switzerland people have already attained liberal uh, liberty and there was a nation state then following them there comes france france identifiably by the revolutionary tricolor has just reached the statue so france have only attained freedom or they have become a nation state only while he is doing this picture the french were followed by the people of germany bearing the black red and gold flags interestingly at the time when soro created this image the german people did not yet exist as a united nation so while he drew this picture that time germany was only a group of state at that time in 1848 when frederick soro drew this picture germany was only about to unify under a nation state they doesn't have a democratic constitution at that time for resembling germany as a nation state in his picture frederick soro has given a tricolor flag to them that is black red and golden one following the german people are the people of austria the kingdom of the two sicilies lombardy poland england ireland hungary and russia from the heavens above christ saint and the angels gaze upon the scene they have been used by the artist to symbolize fraternity among the nation of the people so in his picture from the above you can see saints christ angels gazing at the sea gazing means looking deeply to the scene what is happening here in the picture by this pictureization he consider that they symbolize fraternity means brotherhood or common uh, thinking the symbolizing of fraternity among the nations of the world this chapter will deal with many of the issues visualized by soro in figure 1 during the 19th century nationalism emerged as a force which brought about sweeping changes in the political and mental world of europe so in 19th century by the emergence of nationalism europe have been to a drastic changes in the field of political and the concept of europe have been entirely bent upside down in the mind of the people other than europe the end resulted of these changes was a emergence of the nation state in place of multinational dynastic empires of europe the empires have been swept away and nation state concept came into europe the concept and practices of a modern state in which a centralized power exercises sovereign control the concept and practice of a modern state in which a centralized power exercises sovereign control over a clearly defined territory had been developing over a pe- long period of time in europe Europeans are people who are much civilized than Asians and Africans so before itself the concept of modern state existed there among people and also among rulers also but a nation state was one in which the majority of its citizen and not only its rulers came to develop a sense of common identity and shared history or descent before the state or the nations were under the will or under the pleasure of king and all all the series of actions that happened in nation was under the name of king but what happened when the modern state transferred to a nation state under this nation state people had developed a sense of common identity and they had enjoyed much power and pleasure than when they were under a monarch and shared history or descent descent means uh, while coming downward this commonness does not exist from time immemorial it was forged through struggles 
through the actions of leaders and the common people so the common identity of people have not been there in europe from time immemorial it has been achieved or been attained by struggles then lot of movements revolutionary activities then actions of leaders and common people this chapter will look at the diverse process through which nation state and nationalism came into being in 19th century europe so this chapter takes you to the european nationalism and how they have attained what are the diversions that happened in the course of time okay shall we look into this box of source a ernst renan what is a nation so ernst renan is a french philosopher and he have delivered a lecture in the university of sorbonne in 1882 and after that this lecture has been published as a famous essay entitled quasi quench nation this is in french and the meaning is what is a nation in this essay renan has criticized that the nation is not only formed by common language race religion or territory but also by culmination of a long past or interviews sacrifice and devotion in his essay renan criticizes that a nation has not been formed of common languages race religions and territories he says that there are lot other things that have contributed for being a country or being a state nation a nation is a culmination of a long past of endeavors sacrifice and devotion then he says that we have to memorize what the uh, national revolutionists have done we have to glorify their activities their heroic past great men glory that is the social capital upon which one bases a national idea all these things should be remembered while we think about a country or a state as a nation what do i mean by a plebiscite a direct vote by which all the people of a region are asked to accept or reject a proposal so when a proposal is brought to a country the people are directly asked to vote and they can express their view whether it is accepted or whether it is rejected that is not an issue but they can vote accordingly i hope you enjoyed listening this session please watch the videos and if you have any doubts regarding any uh, topics uh, please comment and the uh, continuation of this chapter is on next videos please watch like share and subscribe thank you very much bye